last realize that you will be happier without me. I do not blame you, so you must not blame yourself for my action. We are told this is the coward's way, but I feel I am acting not out of weakness, but out of strength. All the strength I can muster. Love, Susan. <laughs> Theater 5 presents To Be or Not To Be, Maybe. I'm acting not out of weakness, but out of strength. All the strength I can muster. Reading it again. You uh, had to read it again. It's been over a year, but every time there's an argument, you have to read it. You're sorry I bungled it. You're really sorry, aren't you? Oh, please, Sue. Now, you know that's not true. Now, let's not go into all of it again. Then why do you always take that out and read it? Why do you keep it? Hoping, I guess, that it will remind you of that horrible experience. I, well, I, I guess I'm afraid you might try again. You're afraid of nothing of the sort. You'd love me to try again, but you know I won't. Then I thought I didn't care about my life. Well, now I care. My life, such as it is, matters to me. Oh, I know you're dying for your freedom, but I'm not dying to give it to you. And not by divorce, either. I never asked for a divorce. Oh, but if you thought it would do you any good, you'd ask quick enough. You wish you could just give me two weeks' notice like some employee at your office. You hate my inefficiency and you never stop telling me. You don't want a wife, you want an office manager. Oh, why can't you understand that all I want is an end to this constant fighting? You think I enjoy it? Well, you seem to. Whatever we talk about ends up in an argument. I don't start them. <laughs> Susan. When I came home this evening, I asked if you'd like to go out to dinner. And you accused me of making a crack about dinner not being ready. Now, I don't know what you call that, but I call it starting an argument. Oh, don't play Mr. Innocent with me. In everything you do and everything you say, there's a hidden criticism of me. And not always too hidden. You didn't want to take me out for dinner. You were making a crack and you know it. Doing it in a way to make me appear unreasonable. You do it Susan, over and over. Susan, please. Now, without any hidden meaning, and as simply as I know how to say it, can't we accept the fact that our marriage didn't turn out to be the love of the century, well, but... You can say that again. But as long as we're living together, can't we at least try to live with some small degree of peace and quiet? Perhaps even hope to enjoy a moment together now and then. I try. I try all the time. For days, I beg for us to go to Vermont for a weekend of skiing. Just a simple weekend in Vermont. Some people fly to Rome for a weekend to Paris just for dinner. But I ask for a little weekend in Vermont, and I've had to listen to you tell me I'm unreasonable. Still twisting it to suit your purpose. That is not what I said. You did. Even tonight. Since you walked through that door tonight, you've said at least ten times that I'm unreasonable. All right. Make it eleven. You're unreasonable. Oh, why not make it an even dozen? You are unreasonable. Try to enjoy a few moments together, you said. Then calling me unreasonable merely because no, I... No, not because you want to go to Vermont. Now, there's nothing unreasonable about wanting to go skiing. But it is unreasonable to keep going on and on about it when I've told you I can't spare the time right now. So easy, isn't it? You don't want to go, so you say you can't spare the time. Well, I can't. Then you make me the villain because I don't meekly give in. Now, I've explained to you why I can't... Oh, you've explained nothing. I'd be interested in an explanation of why you're so busy you can't get away for a weekend. I have a fairly good idea, but I'd like to hear it. Go ahead, explain it. Can't you talk without shouting? No, because I don't get through to you. Do you want the neighbors to think you're insane? Oh, I don't care. Maybe I am sick. 
Sick of being told you're right and I'm wrong. Sick of complaints about my cooking, the way I run the house. Sick of being made to feel guilty every time I ask... Susan, stop it! All right, all right, we'll go. You pack, get the car filled with gas, and we'll leave first thing in the morning. I'm going out for a walk. It's a fine arrangement for you. When things get too unpleasant at home, you come here. But what about me? Darling, it's not as if I misled you. You were a friend of Susan's. You knew the situation. You accepted it. I did, at first. You mean you don't now? I mean I don't enjoy sitting here waiting with open arms for you to have a fight with your wife. You don't have to wait long. I'm here more than I'm home. It's not the same. Thank heaven it isn't. I love every minute I spend with you. I like to think you feel the same. I do. But when you aren't here, when you're home, when I'm alone, I I start realizing that we have no relationship. Not really. It's what the other woman must always realize in the end. Oh, don't say that. You're not the other woman. No? Then what am I? The woman I love. Do you? Where are you when I have a problem and need you? I can't come to you. What about the times that I don't feel well? I'm just plain lonely. I can't even call you. Darling, I'm aware of that. And I don't like it either. And I, I try to make it up to you. You come here and complain to me about Sue, of how miserable you are. I'm expected to soothe you and baby you like a little boy who got into a fight on the way home from school. I want to be a mother, but not that kind. I love you, Harold, but there's no future for us. Perhaps if we go to Sue, if, if we explain, perhaps you'll give me a divorce. Oh, you know better than that. We both do. Hello? Hello? Who is it? Who's there? Strange. There's no answer, but the line was open. Oh, wrong number, probably. Harold, do you think Sue could suspect us? No, I'm sure not. Well, at times recently, I've wondered. Yeah, well, if she did, we'd hear about it, believe me. I'm not so certain. And just now, the telephone, I could almost sense her at the other end. Oh, you imagined it. Perfectly natural under the circumstances. Now, forget it. Here. Let me get you another drink. No, I don't want one. I, I'm tired. I, I really think you ought to leave. Go home, please. I can't leave you now. Not, not after the way you've been talking. Staying another hour, two hours? What would that solve? I can't leave when you're upset. Laurie. Yes? Susan did try to take her life once. Remember? Of course I remember. Maybe she will again. Harold, please. You're trying to hold on to me by holding out false hopes that somehow, some way, things will be different. But she did try once. We don't know she won't. Yes, we do. She had no intention of suicide. It was just another one of her sick tricks. She wanted to frighten you, make you sorry for her. It worked. I do feel sorry for her. She'll try again. I'll make sure she does. Harold, what do you mean? There are ways. I've thought about it. She'll try again. And want to or not, this time she'll succeed. <laughs> This is the first drink I've enjoyed with you since, uh... Well, now, let's think, yeah. Uh, must have been our fifth anniversary. More than two? No, nearly two years ago. 
I wish you could know what a pleasure it is. What a delightful change. To sit here and have my martini. I, uh, leave my sixth martini in peace and quiet. And to know that at long last, this is one evening when you won't end up fighting. You never realize my hatred for fighting, for any sort of violence. <laughs> oh, if you could but know what I've planned for you, I think you would actually be proud of me. But I'm afraid you won't know. I'm afraid my loving wife has had too many of my very special martinis. All right. There's only one thing to do, and I think it's time to do it. Take you to the garage and let you sleep it off. A long, long sleep. Huh? Up we go. <laughs> oh, I hate to say it, my love, but you're heavier than when I carried you across the threshold. Uh, <laughs> but I didn't carry you, did I? No, I remember we thought it too corny. Well, maybe that's where we made our first mistake. People like us shouldn't fear being corny. Down you go. Now, let's see. A bit more to the side. Ah, perfect. Slumped in the front seat exactly as I found you before. Ah, now, your note. Your sweet, thoughtful suicide note. It was that one line you wrote. Uh, I have at last realized you will be happier without me. <laughs> you see, my dear, it proves that with a little effort, two people, may even two people like us, can find something upon which they can agree. There's no question but that you were completely right. I shall be much happier without you. Now, the hose through the window. Now to connect it. Sorry if I'm slow, but I... I haven't had your experience at this sort of thing. There now. Keys. Put them in the ignition and turn them. Have a pleasant trip. <sighs> Darling wife, bon voyage to the undiscovered country. <laughs> The undiscovered country from which no traveler returns. And that's the whole story. Now, Lori, let's drink to our future together. Don't you think you've had enough to drink? It isn't going to be easy for you. You'll need a clear head. My head has never been clearer. I don't know how you can be so calm after... Well, after... Don't be afraid. Say it. Murder. Now, frankly, I'm surprised, too, but uh, there is something very sobering about murder. Now, let's go over it all again. Maybe there's something important you overlooked. I don't want to keep talking about it. I've thought of everything. Drink your drink and please stop worrying. What about an autopsy? Wouldn't they find traces of the sleeping powder or whatever it was? There's not likely to be one. There's the suicide note written in her handwriting, and there's the record of her previous attempt. It's natural for such a person to try again. There's no reason for suspicion. Even so, there could be an autopsy. It wouldn't matter. The drug was prescribed by her doctor and purchased by her.
from our druggist. But won't the police wonder why she didn't just take an overdose? They might. But I doubt if she'll be able to tell them. But the record will show she tried this route before. But why the drug first? Well, if it were you, wouldn't you rather be drowsy and falling asleep than just sit there smelling the carbon monoxide? I suppose. <laughs> There's your answer. Darling, you must believe me. I thought of all these things. Won't the police wonder where you've been during the past two hours since you had a drink with her? Probably. Well, what will you tell them? The truth. That I was here. She and I got into an argument. I left and came over here until she had a chance to calm down. You know, darling, you're beginning to sound like a district attorney. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. But if you plan to use me as an alibi to involve me, then I think Laurie, I... Laurie, you're already involved. I did it for you. Now, let's please stop talking about uh, what's been done and start making plans for ourselves. We can't. Not now. Why not? Now we'll be free to marry. Not right away, of course, but in a few months. Well, that's what you wanted. But not like this. I didn't think you'd... Well... Murder my wife for it? Well, of course you did. We did everything but uh, talk about it outright. I knew you had it in mind, but I never thought you'd actually do it. Well, you didn't leave me much choice. Don't start blaming me. Well, you made it clear that it was either get rid of her or get rid of me. I, I couldn't lose you, Laurie. You know how much you mean to me. Uh, no, Harold, please don't. I have to think. But I love you, Laurie. You say that now. Maybe you may want to be free of me, just as with Sue. The same way, even. Arlene, how can you talk like that? I did what I did because I love you. I heard it's easier the second time. Oh, now, darling, you're, look, you're just upset. And don't realize what you're saying. Get some rest. It's time I should be returning to the apartment anyway. Harold, I'm afraid. Well, don't be. After I've reported it to the police, and as soon as I know everything is going to be all right, I'll call you. No, don't call. It may not be safe. You're her friend, our friend. It's perfectly natural that I'd call you, just like I'll notify other people. I guess you're right. I know I'm right. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. And uh, try not to worry. I'll try. Susan? Who's there? Mr. King? What? Who are you? What are you doing here? I'm sorry I frightened you. Who are you? And where's my wife? I'm Lieutenant Young. We found this note. It's addressed to you. Let me see it. Oh, no. Susan, no, not again. Where is she, Lieutenant? I want to see my wife. Where is she? Here I am, darling. Susan, I, I thought that... Oh. I know what you thought. But as you can see, you were mistaken. But uh, I'm afraid I, I don't understand. But... No, I'm sure you don't. But it's really quite simple. Oh, please don't think it was your fault. You were very clever as always. And your plan was obviously thought out carefully and logically. However, your bungling wife merely bungled again. Bungled? How do you mean bungled? Remember when you told me to fill the car up with gas? <laughs> well, you know how stupid I am. You're always reminding me. I forgot to do it. The car only ran for a few minutes. It's difficult to make them run without gas. But at least you're not without me. Correction, Mrs. King. I'd say he'll be without you for, well, if he's lucky, only ten years. Correction, Lieutenant. Only ten years if he's unlucky. The 
5 has presented To Be or Not to Be, Maybe. Written by Claude Travers and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, Stan Watt, Arlene Walker, June Graham, and Jack Hurdle. Audio engineers Marty Folia and Neil Pope.